Hey everybody, it's Angie from Trips with Angie and I am here on a Katarina Line Croatia yacht cruise sailing from Split to Dubrovnik. I'm going to share with you all the highlights from all the ports we stopped to visit, the three things that surprised us most, and what it's like to sail on one of these deluxe superior yachts. Our seven night itinerary began in Split, Croatia and ended in Dubrovnik. We booked it through Katarina Line and after checking in at the Katarina Line office in the Split Marina, we found our yacht, the Ave Maria. Hopefully you're a subscriber, so you've already seen the yacht tour and the cabin tour. If not, please subs consider subscribing for future sneak peeks. We started with a meeting with Zorin, our amazing tour manager and tour guide. He led us on a walking tour through the Dionysian Palace ruins in Split, including this incredible underground aqueduct that's been recreated for a marketplace. And we found this incredible wedding celebration in one of the main squares. We ended up back on board for sunset. What's the saying? Red sky at night, sailors delight. Here we are sailing away from Split, Croatia. The way the day works is we get up in the morning, we have breakfast, we have a meeting to go over the day, we head to a swim spot, have a little lunch, and then head to our dock where we'll spend the night. Day two, we had a brief stop at the Golden Sand Beach in Bowl and also a chance to walk around the marina and see a little house within a house. We got a bonus swim stop in the harbor as we were waiting to head into Havar. And then Zoran led us on a walking tour of the largest square in Europe. It's so large because it actually used to be a moat that went all the way to the cathedral. On the left there was the nobility and the right was the commoner. And here's a closer look at that beautiful Renaissance cathedral. We had a little happy hour in the marina watching the sunset and then made our way up the cobblestone steps to find a wonderful restaurant for dinner. We are sailing away from Harv, Croatia this morning on our way towards Vis, uh, with maybe a stop at the Blue Cave along the way. The Blue Cave visit unfortunately was canceled due to the weather conditions, so we headed straight to Vis, where we had an informal walking tour around a historic monastery, and we even spied one of the filming locations from Mamma Mia 2. It was fun to see the Ave Maria from the other side of the harbor. In the afternoon, there was a wine tasting included at a winery that is located in a old military bunker. So instead of storing munitions, they now store wine. They had a lovely tasting of a rosé, a white, and a red, plus some snacks. We joined the group for dinner for an extra charge at a family restaurant up on the hill where they served under the bell cooking. So they made this incredible octopus stew. They literally put a bell on top, let it steam and slow cook all day definitely a must try and then we had some beautiful views in the evening after a bit of a rocky morning we arrived here in Cortula just prior to arrival though we anchored in the bay for a lovely wine and olive oil tasting we're here because it's known as one of the best preserved medieval cities so we're gonna take a bit of a walking tour and I'll show you the highlights this was my favorite stop on the whole cruise. The medieval city is absolutely incredible. It's totally walled all the way around. It has historic churches and a very unique architectural feature. So on the left, you see that that alley dead ends. And then on the right, you see that that alley actually goes all the way to the sea. You can kind of get a peek at the Ave Maria. So they did this so that the breezes would come in from the ocean during the summer months, so straight in from the sea, but then during the winter months, the harsher winds would dead end and not make its way throughout the entire walled city. We had a lovely evening walking around enjoying the different restaurants and bars and incredible views. Today's stop is at Millet National Park. This absolutely gorgeous park has two lakes, a large lake and a small lake, and in the middle of the large lake is an island with historic monastery and church. Let me show you the highlights. Your entrance to the National Park includes a boat ride to and from the island. So here's the first glimpse of the island with its walls and towers. It's not currently a working monastery, uh, but you can hike around. There's also two restaurants, a gift shop, as well as the church. Uh, inside the church, they have some beautiful stained glass. Definitely worth a visit. After lunch, we hiked back into the park. It is a lot of steps, so just be ready for that and found a great little location to swim. I wish we had brought 
water shoes because it was very rocky, but worth it. We're here in Slano where we'll be taking about a half an hour bus ride to Stone to visit a medieval city, including a fortified wall and an oyster farm. Here are the highlights. Just prior to stopping in Slano, we had a swim break. So this is what it looks like. We drop anchor or tie up on shore, and then you get to jump in the water. So there's two ladders on either side you can climb down. They had paddle boards and floaties. Now the water was a bit brisk since we went at the end of the season, but it was absolutely incredible. I kept saying it's like one of those brochure moments, and one of the reasons we took this yacht cruise was to do this, to just stop somewhere, and jump in the beautiful Adriatic Sea. The ride from Slano to Stone took about 30 minutes along the coast. We were very comfortable on our big bus. Stone is known for its medieval fortified city, long wall, and salt work. So here are the salt ponds. This is to believe to be one of the oldest active salt works in all of Europe. But the big claim to fame here is the wall. It has one of the longest fortified walls in the world and we got to climb on part of it. So we headed through town, up and then up the steep stairwells. I'm smiling here but this was strenuous and we did it very quickly. But then it was time for a little more relaxation. We boarded a boat out to a small private island for an oyster and mussel tasting. It was absolutely incredible. Look how beautiful this space the oysters were plump and slightly salty. The mussels were phenomenal. They were cooking them on a fire right next to where we were seated. We ate this whole thing, but we still had room for the formal dinner when we made it back to the yacht. Today's stop took us to the cable car at the top of Dubrovnik. Heading up the cable car is well worth it. That harbor you see there to the right was where the Ave Maria was docked. You can see the old walled city there right in the center, the small harbor, Lacrum Island. So definitely head up there. We also took a short walking tour through the heart of the walled city. One of the big activities here is climbing the walls. You can pay to have entrance to the top of the walls and explore there. You'll also see a lot of filming locations from Game of Thrones. We ended the evening at a lovely restaurant with a view over the harbor. And then that was the end of our cruise. We headed back to the yacht and the next morning we checked out and then checked into our Airbnb in Dubrovnik. And I'll have more about that experience in my next video. So that brings us to what surprised me. And this first thing no one talked about in any of the videos I watched, and that is stacking. So what is stacking? In this picture, the yacht all the way to the left is the only one against a dock. So to get to the yacht all the way to the right, you have to climb through each yacht. The yachts aren't exactly level to each other, so some you'll have to step up, some you'll have to step down. You have to duck your head to make sure you don't hit your head on the other yacht. I just, I wasn't <laughs> expecting this. So it can take a little bit to get off your yacht if you're the yacht all the way at the end. Now the fun part of it is you get to check out all the other yachts and see which ones you liked best. Surprise number two was how formal lunch was. We knew lunch was included, but we did not expect three course formal lunches every day. So here's a typical three course lunch. It was heavy. It took an hour. It was nice. We got a free glass of beer or wine, but sometimes it kind of interrupted the routine or the itinerary. The third thing that surprised me was the quality of included excursions. We got into the national park. We took a bus to different areas, but the excursion that really took the cake was the oyster excursion in stone. This is an exclusive excursion to people who take deluxe superior yacht, and it really blew me away. It's one of the best I've ever done. I was also surprised we got to ride the cable car in Dubrovnik. Now on to the onboard experience. So subscribers, you had the yacht tour and the cabin tour in your feed a few weeks ago, but for everyone else, this was the top deck. This is where people would hang out if they wanted to be in the sun. They also would open up the hot tub for us. It felt really good after taking a swim in that brisk Adriatic Sea. One deck down was where I would hang out in the mornings, grab my cup of coffee, head out here to watch us as we sailed away. A lot of us also hung out here at night. The bar would be open and alcohol was available for purchase. As kind of a bummer, they didn't fill in the pool during our sailing. I think some people would have preferred that to climbing down the swim ladders at some of our swim stops. In terms of the cabin, it was a very good size. It actually was a bit bigger than our river cruise cabin, but the storage was a problem. You can see here, it's a very small closet, even, you know, 
with the extra shelves, but it was nice. You had your own air conditioning heating unit, but there was no place for the suitcases to go. The bed was bolted to the ground, so you couldn't put them underneath like we usually do. But the bathroom was very nice. It was a good size bathroom, especially for you know the size of a cabin, the size of a ship. And then of course, you don't want to miss my shower review. It's time for the shower review, and it's a good one. It's huge, plenty of room, I can turn around, plenty of headroom, handheld shower, it's great. So that brings us to the final review. The cabin, I gave a 7.5 out of 10 for all of the reasons I just mentioned. Condition of the ship, I gave it a 6 out of 10. The ship was showing a lot of wear and tear for only being four years old. And you may have noticed when I showed the deck, like not all the pillows were on the furniture. The chaise loungers were a little frayed around the edges. So I think it could use a little refresh. In terms of dining, nine out of 10. I thought the food was delicious. It was fresh. The only thing keeping it from being a 10 is I think there were some missteps in the formal night dinner. It was a lot of tuna and the tuna was overcooked. So it just had a few missteps in the formal dinner, but otherwise the dining was very good. Again, breakfast was included at every day. Lunch was included every day. And then we got two dinners. Entertainment and activities, 10 out of 10. Zorin was a terrific tour manager. As I said before, we were really impressed with the excursions, all the places we got to go. Service, 9 out of 10. Again, terrific service. The crew would do anything for you. They arranged special swim stops for us. The only thing keeping it from being a 10 is I wish on some of the days when we were sailing in the afternoon, the bartender would have just taken a quick walk around to see if anyone needed anything. In terms of value, 10 out of 10. I jokingly would say this is my below deck experience. So below deck is a TV show on Bravo that talks about rich people who rent super yachts. And I got to live that life. I got to sail around Croatia, drop anchor, go for a swim. So 10 out of 10. So overall, that leaves us with an 8.5 out of 10. What do you think? Was my ranking fair based on what you saw in the video? Would you enjoy a cruise like this? Let me know.